All right. Um, first, we're gonna we're gonna have questions about the panel and questions about the board. So cool. we'll start with questions about the panel first. Um, for the concussion awareness, prevention, and treatment, what was important for you to express here today regarding concussions in the NFL? Well, the most important thing uh, for me to express about concussions was that the treatment has to be there, but the awareness and the education has to be there as well. There needs to be a change of culture, starting with the younger kids, the grassroots type of programs. And these kids need to understand that we need to educate them and allow them to have the knowledge that any type of head trauma is a concussion. And you have to take that seriously because there are definite results and uh, things that will happen later on in life, uh, early onset of uh, dementia, early onset of uh, Alzheimer's, uh, all types of brain injury and diseases that can quite possibly happen to you if you continue to play, continue not to uh, take heed uh, to the not sitting out and not doing the things that you should to prepare yourself uh, if you sustain a concussion. Okay, and one of the things you mentioned while you were up there is the problem of being labeled as concussion prone as a yeah. player and what that means to the player and, and trying to get out, back on the field. And you guys talked about Alex Smith, how he lost his job. And you kind of talked about how the media, you know, what, what the effect of being labeled concussion prone is. Well, the, the problem with athletics is that injury is always going to be involved. And as an athlete, you never want to be labeled as injury prone because at that point, uh, you take the your ability uh, to gain money and to, to to earn money, and you bring that ability all the way down. And so if you add concussion, which is the latest hot topic for the NFL and a lot of professional sports organizations, and they, they label you as concussion prone, at that point, um, people and coaches start to steer away from you. And so going from 32 teams that could possibly uh, choose you to work for them, that cuts in half to 16. And that and, and, and that hurts your value as a player, and it hurts your value as an, as an opportunity, a person with the opportunity to learn and win football games and earn money. And so at that point, uh, players try to stay clear, steer clear of being labeled concussion prone. But and, and by doing that, the problem is they continue to go out there and play with concussions without really quite understanding uh, the, the long-term results of, of actually having concussions and playing with them. So and I know you talked about um, starting with the education and then starting the grassroots, but where do you think the issue of concussion is going in the NFL specifically? How are teams handling it and how is the league handling it? Well, I think the league is doing a much better job of handling concussions. They're, they're working on getting independent doctors on the sidelines of every football game uh, to monitor concussions. And I think they have to continue to uh, educate the players, and I think by this point, a lot of the players understand it. They have to continue to educate the players, but I think there has to be a minimum uh, time that players set out. Now, you can't play a game on Sunday, sustain a concussion, whether it's quote-unquote minor or a full-blown concussion, and come back in Thursday and play. I don't think that's doing any of the players justice. I don't think it's doing the NFL any justice, and, and it also is providing a very bad example for the young kids in the grassroots programs and the younger kids playing. And so I think there needs to be a minimum set out time uh, for kids. And if they do that, then they'll, they're starting uh, on the way a little bit further in helping these young players and older players out uh, that have been uh, labeled as concussion prone and have actually sustained concussions. Um, okay, and then one more question about the panel. It's, it's kind of stemming off that question is, um, you know, talked about how once you diagnose concussion, then you can really, well, you have to sit out a week or sit out a month and continue these baseline tests. But like we talked about, a lot of, a lot of the problems come from, it, it so much starts with the players. And I know um, Mr. Nelson talked about is, you don't want to go tell them that you have a concussion. Right. And you talked about, there's so many small concussions in the middle of the play, and it's the big ones that later they can document it. But how do you, how do you, is there any way to be able to fix these small concussions or does it all just go back to the education? Well, you have to educate. The only way to fix the smaller concussions, you have to educate the players. And they, they you have to also foster an environment where there's complete honesty. And that's me as a player trusting the trainers and being able to go to them and say, hey, I have a concussion. I think I have a concussion. Uh, at least allow me to be tested for that. And so many times guys are afraid of losing their job afraid of losing money because the contract is not guaranteed in the NFL, 
that guys are not willing to, to risk that. And so um, the culture has to change. The awareness has to change, but also um, the, the attitude from the coaches down, meaning the trainers and as well as the players, has to change. Thank you. Um, okay, now we're going to change a little bit, uh, focus on the board of advisors and, and your acceptance as a position on the board. Right. Um, to start, what do you think, um, obviously this is a board of advisors for a law school and a law program. What do you think of the fact that the board of advisors is made up almost entirely of people with um, – professional experience and almost completely out of academia and how do you think that's going to affect the board? Well I think it will give the board an, a different view. Um, so many times uh, and as a lot of kids understand a lot of adults quite know that you, you go to school you learn a lot of different things and then applying it that application to real life is a little bit different than uh, book smarts and so I think having people that have experience uh, things outside of just the academic side of things, but have experience, um, workforce type of thing, work issues, uh, sports issues, those types of things is very important. And I think just having that well-roundedness of people that are inside the academic arena, as well as people uh, from the outside area, will make this board uh, terrific. Greg, do you have the handheld mic on you? Uh, no. Okay, and then... Um, like you said, there, there's so many different viewpoints on the board from professional experience. What do you, as a professional athlete, how, how can how, how would you like to help the board and, and help guide the, the program to be where we want to be? Well, I think my value would, of course, be about uh, uh, athlete and sports knowledge of going through contract negotiations as well as uh, dealing with concussion types of issues and injury types of issues. But the players go through a lot of different things from law issues as well. Uh, dealing with authorities and so I think those things are important but uh, as a young man uh, being 33 years old there also has to be a post-career type of thing as well and I think uh, the, the law school and the board is, is a part being a part of it kind of you bring that value as well and you have to try to figure out what are you going to do at 33 being retired from the NFL uh, the businesses that I do own uh, how are those things going to be successful and so all those experiences I hope to bring to the board and help uh, this board flourish. Okay, and then uh, just the last question about the board is, from a Villanova grad and somebody who had such an amazing professional career in Philadelphia with the Eagles, where would you like to, to see the board go and, and how would you like people to view this board when they think Villanova, uh, Morad, uh, Center for Sports Law and Business, what would you like the direction for the program to be? Well, anytime that um, I speak about Villanova, anytime that that people speak about Villanova, they say that it's a great school with a great tradition of academic excellence. And that's all we want to continue, especially with this board, uh, people to understand that Villanova is going to be uh, one of the best law schools, law programs, uh, but academic universities in the country. And I think uh, this board will just promote that type of learning, promote that type of uh, awareness, and it also allow people to understand that um, this is the beginning but it is surely not where we're going to end at uh, with this board, and we'll continue to progress and get better every single year. And at, at the end of the day, we'll look, sit back and look at the situation, and we'll say, this is where we began, and here we are now, a much better place, a much better law school as well.